Hello there. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at five shocking blunders by the current world champion Magnus Carlsen, the highest rated chess player who has ever lived. Okay, so let's begin with position number one, blunder number five on the fifth position. Um, Carlsen is play, playing wide against David Navarra. At the time, this is back in 2007, Carlsen was actually lower rated than Navarra. Navarra was 27.19 and Carlsen was 26.90. Okay, so Carlsen, Magnus is playing white here and he's played the exchange variation of the Grunfeld. Okay, you wouldn't expect him to play this variation nowadays. So let's see how the game went. We get to this position and now the most common move at the time was c4, but um, Navarra played f5. And here both players are on their own and Magnus played f4, which is a very interesting move. So pawn takes, bishop takes, knight here, threatening to come to e3 with a knight, queen to d3, knight d6. He gives up the e pawn, but is hoping to take on e4, followed by bishop to f5. So that's exactly what happened in the game. And Carlsen had seen that he's got very good compensation for the exchange, thanks to those two pawns and the activity of his pieces. Like, you know, if, um, if black doesn't, doesn't really do anything, e6 could be deadly. So queen to f5, this is a critical move. We can't take on b7, of course, because the, then queen to f1. So the rook comes to e1. And now black takes the pawn on e5. Apparently, Carlsen had calculated this position. And in his analysis, he'd come up with a brilliant idea. Knight d4. It's a, it's a discover attack on the bishop on e5. We're threatening to take on, on e5 with check. And we're also threatening um, the queen. So bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and rook to e8. And now, despite all the exchanges... Um, White still has winning chances in this position. Um, yeah, um, of course, if we go with bishop b5, black can simply take. Uh, so that doesn't seem to be um, enough for an advantage. So h3, king to g7. We, um, we play a queen to b5, threatening the rook, and also the pawn on b7. So black now goes rook here. So that if we take on b7, he's got rook d7, and then we, we take on d4. And white now takes on c5. So we've got those two pass pawns. Rook to d7, a4. And in this position, David Navarra, all he had to do is move like h5, and the position is about even. You know, both both sides have chances. I think the, the most logical result would be, a, would be a draw here. But instead of that, he blundered with g5. Now the queen is unprotected. And in this position, all Magnus had to do is advance a C pawn like this. Okay, because now the queen is on. And if black takes the queen, then pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and those two pawns win for white with the aid of the bishop. You know, there's not very much black can do here. Instead of that, Carlsen blundered with A5, a double question mark move. And now after A6, um, a few moves later, um, Carlsen didn't have any compensation. He was actually forced to resign. Okay, so that was the first horrible blunder by Magnus Carlsen. Now, let's see blunder number four. And this is his game against Kramnik. Um, Kramnik is, uh, is just about the total chess player. He's good at openings. He's, he's brilliant at uh, middle games, strategy, planning, tactics. He, he's got an incredible technique in the end game. He, he really is the total chess player. So let's see what happened in this game. They got to this position. And now after knight bd7, Carlsen, who was white, this game was played in 2010, now chose bishop takes knight. A very good move. And the point being that if black takes back with a the knight, then knight e5 and the backward pawn on c6 is in real trouble. Or if he takes back with the bishop, then knight e4, um, and white's going to go rook c1 next. And as you can see, there's a lot of pressure against um, c6. And from e4, um, white's knight is making sure that black doesn't play the free move c5. So white's slightly better in this position also. So what did Kramnik do? Of course, he took with a pawn. 
this move does damage his king side, but um, it avoids the, um, the problems of the other two moves. So queen to c2, b4, knight here, which makes c5 a little bit more difficult. And now white castle. And now black chose c5. Of course, we don't really want to take on c5 because then black's pieces spring back to life. Instead of that, um, Carlsen found d5, exclamation mark, giving up a pawn. And the whole point now is that the, the b1, h7 diagonal is a lot weaker. And also look at that f5 square. Not h4 is coming. The knight is heading towards f5. And you know, that looks like a pretty dangerous knight. We don't want to take with this pawn because then d4 is, um, is a really weak square. We want to keep the pawns together, of course, as usual. Look at that diagonal. And now watch this. Um, Kramnik doesn't care about that pawn. He tries to activate his pieces instead. King here. Knight takes. Pawn takes. Bishop here. Rook here. Attacking that pawn. Again, um, Kramnik doesn't care about his pawn. He wants to activate his pieces. And now watch this, again, you know, um, if he moves the rook here, then knight takes c5, of course. So what does Kramnik do? He thinks the activity of his pieces is more important, so he goes c4. Because now he gets a beautiful diagonal, okay, very dangerous diagonal, and those three pawns are likely to get at least one pass pawn, which will will mean trouble for um, for white, okay? Very interesting play. Queen here, possibly threatening queen to c5. And black's king is surprisingly safe on e7 because the um, the e file is, is not entirely open. You know, there's, there's a pawn on, on e2. So what does um, uh, Carlsen do? He, got, he tries to give up that pawn because if black takes it, then, um, you know, you, you're going to get some threats along the e file. But um, Kramnik simply ignores it. You know, he's trying to get counterplay there. He should take spawn, and now everyone expected Carson to go rook to e1, but this is where his blunder comes, you know. Knight to b6, a shocking blunder, you know, a horrible blunder. It is true that white's threatening knight takes c4 or rook to a7 followed by knight to d7. Unfortunately, um, um, Carlsen overlooked a very simple discover attack. Bishop to b7. Now the queen is on, and so is the knight. And the queen cannot go anywhere without losing the knight on c on b6 so queen to f4 queen takes pawn and now the position is completely lost queen takes pawn rook here three to take on f2 and now carson resigned here he didn't even wait for bishop to d4 which which wins the game outright okay um yeah what a weird game um it was a fighting game i must admit that carson played really nice um, up to at, up to his blunder, you know, it was a really interesting fighting game. But it also shows you that when faced with very tough opposition, sometimes Carlson does not respond like a world champion, and you know that could have could have dramatic consequences in the next in the in the forthcoming world championship match against Karjakin. Let's move on and let's see blunder number three, and this is from the recent Olympiad. Okay, so Carlsen has played this Maroxi bind. Um, it looks like his position is slightly better, but now Black is ready to um, do one of the two pawn breaks with d5 or b5. And when that happens, you know, Black normally gets equality. And watch what happened. d5, the bishop on a3 is on. So we swap, intermediate move, very nice intermediate move. Knight takes, now we take back, so he doesn't take on, on f6 with check. Rook takes, knight takes, c5. And this position is equal. Okay, white's got the pawn majority on the queen side and black's got the pawn majority on the other side of the board. Black's pieces are good. The king is centralized. No, nothing wrong with black's position. And a few moves later, this is what happened. The position was still equal. But no one expected Carlsen uh, to make the blunder that he did. You know, here all he had to do was, you know, rook to b5 with a completely equal position. But instead of that, he blundered with rook to g8. This is shocking, a horrible blunder, because black now goes knight to e7. The rook is under attack, and so is the knight. That's all there is to it. It's not a complicated move. 
Rook takes pawn check in here, rook here, rook here, pawn up, rook here. Yes, he does get one other pawn, but it's not enough because black's pieces now, you know, they become very active and white is simply lost. Not enough compensation. And here, um, Carlsen simply resigned. A shocking blunder by Carlsen. But let's move on to blunder number, th number two. And this could have been much worse. It could have had it could have had much worse consequences because this was the World Championship match against Anand. And here, um, Carlsen is thinking, well, I need to defend this guy on G2 so that this rook can become a little bit more active. Maybe I'll put it here and then there or something. Um, so I'm gonna bring my king over to F1. And, this is a good plan, but he should have chosen the e2 square. Instead of that, he played carelessly and he went key to d2, a blunder, because now um, black can actually take the pawn on e5 with the discover attack on the rook. And when you take the rook, black has this intermediate check. So look at this, two of um, white's pawns are now completely gone. They're gone. He's lost them. Okay, check the king. If the king goes here, we've got this intermediate move. And then you know um, we can take on G, on G8. Maybe White can still save the game, but it's unlikely. You know the position is actually quite difficult. But instead of that, something dramatic happened because Carlson um, made this blunder with King D2, and Anand played A4. He he played nearly he, he, very very quickly. He played A4 without even considering Knight takes E5, which, which could have won the game. Okay, a shocking error, which fortunately for for um, um, Carlson didn't end up too badly because he he actually managed to win in the, to win the game still. So yeah, let's move on to blunder number one. And I must say this is a pay, this was a painful defeat. Carlson played so well in this game. He's playing a minority attack on the queen side. Okay, with b5. Few moves later, they got to this position and. Topalov tries to get some activity with c5. Okay, uh, the position is nearly equal. Um, White's got a slightly better chances because of his pawn structure. Okay, as you can see, those pawns are now quite damaged. I mean, all of Black's pawns are isolated, but still, um, Black's got enough play here. So a few moves later, we got to this position. Queen takes, takes, and we got to this end game. Okay, where Black's trying to get counterplay. And Carlton played really well, a really tough game, and he ended up with this position where he's a pawn up. You know, it's not gonna be easy to promote that pawn because we've got bishops of opposite color. You know, the game went on, a few more moves. You know, and it looks like Carlson has uh, consolidated his advantage. So uh, the, the game went on. And now the most unexpected thing happened. Look at this position, okay? Um, this is move 60. And in this position, Topalov now went king to f7. And guess what happened? Carlsen lost on time. He got, he got mixed up with the um, time controls and he didn't know that he wasn't getting additional time and he actually lost on time. This was a really painful defeat by Carlsen. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm watching this game and I, I feel sorry for the guy because he played so well, he worked so hard for this. Um, in this game and you know to lose this position uh, which by the way is apparently a force win for white after bishop to c4 check um, it's really quite dramatic and, and sad but you know um, let's not forget the number of games that um, that Carson has won um, against um, other players from dead equal end games you know with symmetrical pawn structures Anyway, I hope you liked the video and um, and that's going to be all for today. Thank you. See the subscribe button? Hug it. Show it some love. But above all, click it. And don't forget to visit our website, chess.clinic.